Welcome back to Cricket for Americans. Nick here. Gabe, the Night Watchman. Ooh. And Gabe and I have no fear if you're an Indian fan. Because not only do we open well, but we close it up. We're no walking wicket here. We are talking about the second ODI match. The fifth match total in this South African Indian tour in South Africa. And we're talking about this for another installment of our three, three wickets. wickets. Oh. I couldn't remember this was combos or wickets, so I was oh, waiting for him oh, to say God. it. You, you got <laughs> to give it to the people the way they want to see it, all right? We got to run that back. And guess what? No editing. I'm not doing it again it until right India now. wins a match. It oh. might be three years until oh. it happens. <laughs> oh, listen. If K. Raul is still out there. Uh, uh, um, oh, wow. Uh, I'm sorry. If K. Raul's out there and he's calling the shots, we'll talk about this later on. But it's not blatant who should be bowling and who shouldn't be bowling. KL, just saying. You the ki- you the skipper right now, right? You the captain. Make the right call. Make the right call. Oh, so give it to us, he's Nick. Already, he's he's already fired up. Our no. three wickets. I want to see it. I want to see it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting until they win, and then it will be the most glorious. It'll be signal the glorious of signal time. of all time. All right, all right, all right. Listen, so we're gonna jump we're into talking about this match. Okay, <laughs> South Africa is four and one. They lost the very first test match in this tour, and they've won every match since. And it seems like they they win more convincingly, at least in my opinion. I know you're gonna read the stats, you're gonna say, Oh, they only won with uh, 11 balls left. Right. That wasn't the story. Stop, they were on cruise control, okay. They have won, and they've gotten better, it looks, every single match. I mean, India is, oh, man, it's rough. But South Africa, I got a lot of things to say about them in this installment of our three wickets. Gabe, you start wherever you want, my friend. Well, you know what? I want to go ahead and start with South Africa, as did you. you. And once again, being impressed by not just, you know, we'll talk about the batting. And the batting did their job. They were able to chase this down and whatnot. But we want to talk about the bowling. And in the day when Luang Angidi, who's been the guy carrying this team, taking wickets, right? A very balanced approach. Once again, they went with uh, Luang Angidi, Malanga, Markham, Maharaj. Uh, I can never pronounce that other name with the P. Po Wanko. And then yes, Shami. That's a tough one. Yes. It's, uh, is it Shisami? Something like that? Uh, Sham- Shamsi. 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 There we go. Shamsi. Nobody had more than nine overs, Nick. Nobody's economy rate was higher than six. Okay, I'm sorry. Malanga had an eight, all right? But wickets distributed evenly around, and the only one man that did not get a wicket in uh, Luing and Giri had eight overs, 35 runs, 440 economy rate. So, okay, you know, I say that the problem with India is that their main wicket taker, who's Boomra, all right, he's your guy. I'm not going to get Boomra my wicket. That's bulletin board material. If I'm the coach for South Africa or any other team, I'm telling guys, that's the most dangerous bowler. You survive his overs and attack everybody else. And if other guys aren't doing their job, guess what? That, you're not going to win because you got to take wickets in order to win. You know what I'm saying, Nick? And that's what I've seen There's the difference. I know everybody's going to talk about the runs. Guys, somebody told me, Gabe, 294 is a, is a great score in South Africa. Then isn't 287? I mean, come on. You're pushing 300. It, a great score is only a great score, Nick, if you can hold up and if the bowling holds up. And that's the problem. The bowling has not held up for India other than, once again, a uh, uh, Boomra, and it has for uh, 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 South Africa. All right, you're going to be careful. And apparently there was a couple drops with Lang and Gidi because he could have got himself a couple of wickets or whatnot. But other people stepped up and got wickets, and that's what you need to happen. That's what I see as the difference in, in the matches so far. You know, with that being said, I've got to start giving credit to the batting because everybody's always like, Gabe, you're so biased. You hate you, uh, batters. You love bowling. I am biased. I love bowling. I don't like batters. You're right. My son's a pitcher. What do you think? I go give a round of applause when he gets blasted for a double or a home run? No! No! I, I hate batters. Sorry, yeah, but I not every batters. batter, not every bowler and pitcher is your son. I get that, but that's just I'm partial to bowlers just like I am pitchers in baseball, and I always go with them. But you're right, Nick, and, and in the comments, we got to talk about the batsman. Milan, 78, Nick. I was asking, did Milan retire too early from international cricket because he left Test? 
And that'll, that's a conversation for later. But people are like, no, he's got plenty in the tank. Two outings since the since he retired from Test. Both he's got a 50. I believe in the first match he got a 50 as well. 78 here on 66 ball. Highest strike rate on the team at 118. Right? Milan, who you were clowning last time. 91 runs. I mean, if it's not was, Milan. It was a joke. I know. I'm just saying. If it's not Milan, it's the cock. If it's not the cock, it's Bo- uh, 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 Bavuma. If it's not Bavuma, it's Markham. If it's not Markham, it's uh, RVD, right? Uh, Van- Vanderderson. Nick, that is balance. They just don't put it on the shoulders of one guy. So what I like about this team and what I love is that it was balanced scoring and also balanced taking wickets. They didn't need Lo and Giddy to get three or four wickets this match. Just like in the test match when he got himself a Pfeiffer. Everyone contributes, and that's what you need. And that's what I don't see on the other side. Nick, what did you like when it comes to your Indian squad? Oh, man, you made some good points about the South African side because you're right. It's been different people, been different combinations of people. Everyone seems engaged. Everyone seems to be, you know, grinding it out. And sometimes they make it look a lot easier than other times. And other times they're just not willing to lose that wicket. They're like rock. We say it all the time. I'm not willing to go down. I'm not going to go down no more. Going down and way. it's so impressive. Not just that, but the bowling, the same thing today. One guy had two wickets. Everyone but one bowler had a wicket for crying out loud. And the other thing that was really impressive that I really liked about South Africa today, looking at, I love the numbers, looking at the way of this, all this kind of stuff. South Africa was able to break up every partnership before it went out of control. Now, Pont went nuts with his high strike rate, which we're going to get to that in a second. But they were able to break up every partnership before it got out of hand, which was really, really impressive. The bowling is something you can't be trifled with. The batting, like you said, test, ODI, doesn't really matter. It's like we see like 15 guys, for crying out loud, step up at some point, it seems like. What I like from the Indian side, I love Rashad Pont, so I'm going to start with him. I love the batting. 85 on 71, he had a high strike rate. He came in after um, Dewan went down in the 12th over, then after Coley went down for a duck in the 13th over. He came in, and him and KL Raul were able to build himself a nice little partnership for the next 18 overs or so. That was something that if they would have won, you would have been able to say, hey, that was what was needed at the time. The guy had 10 boundaries, okay, 10 boundaries. Unfortunately, he didn't get too much help. K.L. Raul was there for 55 runs. Yes. Low strike rate. I get it's ODI. I'm not, we're not too worried about a 6-9 strike rate in ODI, but you needed a little bit more. Obviously, you need a little bit more. But I really, really love what Pont was able to do. And also on the bowling side, I mean, Boomerah is in a league of his own right now. Right. Okay. Shahal was really, really good. And I clown Shahal a lot for being expensive. He was not expensive today. He got himself a nice cotton bowl. He almost had another wicket. It was really, really close. Not, not him, but a run out while he was bowling in that same over. And he definitely looked like he was engaged. But Boomerah was just a savage. He was just a savage. He was out there. He couldn't get that big wicket. No one on the Indian squad, for the most part, could. But he was still able to get himself the one wicket. But he was also able to not let too many runs get scored. He bowled 10 overs, only gave up 37 runs. Now, some might say, oh, the numbers don't tell the whole story. He actually bowled horribly. Try to convince me of that one, please. Because this guy was fantastic when the other bowlers weren't able to do enough. The Kerr wasn't too bad, but he gave a lot of runs and five overs because he got that one wicket, the first wicket, which is why I say it wasn't too bad. He was able to get to cock, right? But Talking about Boomerah, and I'm more impressed with his low strike rate. He was able to get Milan, but it was kind of a lucky wicket. Went off the elbow and hit the stumps behind him. You'll take that. Good placement. Milan didn't think, I guess, it was going to bounce out. I'm not sure what happened there. But there wasn't a lot to love in this match once again. There was a lot to not like. But those were some of the things that I highlighted as the things that I really did like. And also just give a little bit of love because this guy's struggling. Fikatesh Iyer, he was able to bowl admirably for not really getting too much bowling opportunities so far in his very, very short cap career. Right, right, right. Um, I'm going to go right now, you know, really quick to what I hated. And it's weird because as I'm watching South Africa 
and I'm watching the squad, seeing what's going on. This, again, is going to go into what I'm going to talk about later. Nick, quitting the cock looks good. Quitting the cock looks really, really good. And yet he just retired from Tess. I just want that you to think about that for a second. Tess is supposed to be the pinnacle. You play for your country till you play for Tess. You and I both love Tess. And Quentin the cock looks. So I was wrong. He had 27 in that first match. He had 79 here. I mean, I'm so concerned with something you mentioned. And is it to the point now where, guys, players aren't prioritizing tests? And we're going to talk about that later. But Quentin the cock just turned 29 in December 17th. All right. This is a young guy. He's only played 54 tests, I should say only, in, in his lifetime. He's got 3,300 runs, averages almost 40 in tests. This guy can play, and he's walking away from tests after what we see. What do I hate? I hate that Nick may be right, and, and, and it's something that people are saying. Like, Tess is just not prioritized, and maybe Tess is dying. And, oh, gosh, I, I don't want to say it, Nick. But watching him so, right now, how could you step away from this game when you're as good as you are? And I know people were saying, oh, well, I think it has to do with the politics of him not kneeling with the whole uh, uh, BLM. Um, when, when, when they had the BLM protest, he chose not to. Right. That was a, a long time ago. Second of all, is he still not playing for an international squad here? Right? And Tess is international, so is ODI, so is T20. So don't, you can't tell me that's the reason. You can't tell me that's the reason. I think it's more of what Nick talked about, the same, protect the body, make more money in limited formats, IPL, stuff like that. So that's what I don't like. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't like that you just couldn't play Tess and you retired from Tess, but yet here in ODI, you crushing it? The skills are there. The skills are there. So just come out and say it. Say what, be, uh, what, what Say the, the, the quiet part out loud. You might as well, because maybe it'll make the, the, the ICC and everybody realize we got to prioritize tests. We've got to start paying these athletes more. We got to make it the worthwhile to pay tests, because if not, it is going to silently die, bro. And I'm just, bro, I'm just, that's what I, I upset me, because I was watching that today, and this guy did not look like he was old. He did not look like he was tired. He does not look like he's unfit. It looks like you, like you said, he made a business decision. Quickly, on India's side, what did I not like? Nick. Boobie's done. Boobie's last ball that I watched in an over was 115 kilometers per hour. That translates to 71 miles an hour. Today, he was between 120 and 130. All right? That translates like 75 to 80, cousin. That's J Jimmy Anderson bowls 80. All right? Really? He don't got Jimmy's movement. He don't got the grounds that Jimmy has at home that's swinging that seam. Like, bro. That's a pacer, and you got Lord Siraj. You know who they got on the bench, Nick? Lord Siraj. It's not like, oh, he's not out there. Lord Siraj is waiting on the bench. So, by the way, is, is Sean Kishin, if we need another batsman, just saying, or Sky, because to me, Vincent Deshire just isn't doing it with the bat, at least, and neither, I'm sorry to say, you know me, very short patience when it comes to it, but uh, Iyer has been bad two games in a row. Both fires, Vincent Deshire and Siraj Sire. So can, can my voice guy get some love? Huh? Huh? Serious liar. Step it up. Because guy wants to play, baby. Man, it was so bad, Nick, by the way, that Sarez Iyer, I didn't even know he could ball. He had a ball today. He actually, they threw him out there as a sacrificial lamb. He had a ball today. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing, all right? It's, I, I, oh, man, it's embarrassing. Nick, what did you not like? <laughs> He's called the serious liar. That's like when your mom is mad at you and she gives you the full name. Oh, yeah, I did it on purpose this time. Just mad at him. Serious liar. You <laughs> holding Sky out of the lineup? How dare you? I know you did. Yeah, Boovy, um, we were trying to figure out, like, okay, what was the injury? Was it, like, four vertebrae got broken? Was it, like, his skull was cut in half? Did he get we can find out so far, 2019 was a hamstring that kept him out of the Let World us know Cup in the chat. And the IPL. Let us know in the what chat. What else is there? Because my research is isn't there? the best. My research is the best, and I'll be honest with you, I don't ever research anything. That's how come I'm wrong a lot, all right? I, I, I rely on Nick, and when Nick's not with me, I just I, I spit it off the cup. Sorry. I was kind of lazy. Kind of like some other people, you know, just saying, Nick, you know what I'm saying? Who, who, who's, uh, who's the uh, all-time winningest captain for Australia? Oh, no, no, that, that photographer. What's his name? Steve Wong, Steve Wong, Steve. Oh, Steve Wong. Steve, Steve Wong. That's what it is. The photographer dude, right? 
Oh, he plays cricket? He plays cricket? <laughs> okay. He played a little I, bit. I'm not the only guy that doesn't do all my research, but Nick does his research, and that was the only thing he was able to find, the, the, the hamstring. So let us know. Is there something we don't know about? Did he get hit by a car? Did he fall out down an elevator shaft? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Booby. He seems like a nice guy. He so does. what did I not like? Oh, my gosh, the Indian side. Oh, the Indian side. I was told, Gabe, and I had felt that they were, you know, top two in test. Maybe top three, maybe as far as top four in ODI. Right. And in the top for T20. They haven't had played T20 match against South Africa yet. They don't look like the top team. Not right now. And I get what you're going to say. You know, as India fans, we were so used to before Coley never went in on the road, all right? But now with Coley, we always went on the road. Okay, that's fine. But we also thought South Africa, okay, they lost the test series. They won the test series. There's no way they're going to win the ODI series. What? Right? The best thing for an India fan, from what I heard, is that this series does not count towards the World Cup points. Not sure how that happens, but it, it doesn't. Right? Maybe because the World Cup's in India, so they're going to qualify anyways. I don't know. But South Africa looks leaps and bounds above India, and it's not just the road. It's, it really, really isn't, in my opinion. India, there's a lot of turbulence, in my opinion, with preparation, with knowing what's going on, as far as what well, I'm perceiving, with captaincy, with so many different things. Things seem in disarray. And maybe they have to have this like kind of mental frenzy right now before things calm down with the change of different things that's going on. But what you saw on the field today was a team that could have won and didn't. And it's not because they blew it. I am not saying South Africa won out of luck because India blew it. No, India just wasn't interested enough. And they're going to say, what are you talking about, Nick? How are they not interested enough? They scored 288. Looking at the research, this was the second highest score that South Africa chased against India. Yeah. Ever. I understand 288 is a great score. Did South Africa not look make it look like it was super easy? Carol said we went into this match feeling like these grounds were similar to ones we played back at home in India. We were very confident. And the thing that frustrates me the most, and, and I'm not I'm not hitting on KRL. I have not jumped off that ship yet. I'm not very happy. I'm not jumping off that ship yet. But the thing that I did not like, and I never liked this when someone's in a athletic leadership position, all I want to hear is I did not do my job. Right. These are the things we're going to fix. These are the things that we know we're going to change, and we're going to make those changes. I did not hear that. I heard, you know, we made some mistakes out there. I didn't hear what the mistakes were. I heard that, you know, we just didn't play our best. I heard that, you know, we're going to do better next time. And I liked how this – I liked how Pont played. He said he said the cur was good, you know. But I didn't hear what I wanted to hear. And I'm hoping – I'm hoping that in the moment he's still working on his mic skills and maybe he doesn't want to divulge too much. I don't know. But what I wanted to hear was we did not do our job. I did not do my job. I could have made better decisions with the bowling rotation, with the fielding rotation, with X, Y, Z. Was not able to do it. We were not prepared against these bowlers the way we should. There's just so much that is just frustrating if you're an Indian fan. If you're a South Africa fan, you're feeling good because South Africa went out there and they took it. Nothing was handed to them. They went out there and they took that win, just like they've taken every win the last four matches, whether it's Test or ODI. But I don't like how the bowling can't get the wickets when they need it. They can't stop the partnerships when they need to, for crying out loud. Right. They can't get the partnerships going when they need to. They can't get the runs. And they've had big performances, 79 from Coley, 85 from Pont. They had, four, they had 50 from the Kerr as one of your bowlers. They had 40 from the Kerr not out today. They had 40. And I want to, I'm want i going to check right here, but I want to say that they all – yeah, 25 from Ashwin. You got 65 from the only two bowlers that batted. Right. The middle order did nothing for you today. No. And who's in the middle order? Fire. Yeah, Coley got his, a duck, right? You Come on. It. He's an opening partnership. He got 29. He wasn't able to last too long. Coley right. comes in. That partnership goes down. Bam, bam. So quick. 
Punt goes off. That's great. And then Iyer comes in. And Iyer back-to-back. And they weren't able to do it. I would still consider them part of the middle order. Yeah, they're right? part of the middle order for sure. Yeah, Wasn't able to do it. And the last thing I want to say that I'm so frustrated about, please explain this to me. And don't just tell me it's a different type of soil. Maybe that's it. Please explain to me why the South Africa spinners have eight wickets in these first two matches and the Indian spinners have two. Eight to two. Is it as simple as we just grew up on these grounds and we know how to spin on these grounds? Aren't these world-class spinners? Aren't these really, really... Shahal and Ashwin, for crying out loud, we just don't have Akshar out there, but he as well would be fantastic. They've gotten two wickets total in these two matches. Right. Every check you look at, when you compare the two teams, South Africa's got the edge. South Africa's got the edge. South Africa's got the edge. And I'm happy for them. I'm so happy for them. This is not me being, you know, sad and mopey and being a baby. I'm not. Right. But if India does is not able to weather this storm, again, I don't care if they lose every match in this tour. If they are not able to weather the storm and learn from it, it's going to be a long 2022. No, bro, and, and I couldn't agree with you more. I think the last thing that I really uh, – I just kind of want to touch on that you mentioned, you know, here's the reality behind it, Nick. It's got to be right now – You no one can tell me that there's some, there's not stuff going on behind the scenes. There's, there's, there's got to be. This team is reeling. And I know that people like K.O. Raul. I like him, too. He's one of our favorite batsmen. Remember when he didn't make the, te- the, the, the test side? We lost our minds. People, oh, he's just an, uh, 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 a T20 guy. Okay, yeah. Look at the numbers he's put up. But with that being said, you put him in a pit situation where he's taking over, be it by injury, because Rohit's not there right now, but all this Coley controversy getting stripped of, of, of all his um, uh, 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 captaincies, and then on top of that, he doesn't have Rohit. I don't even know who the vice captain was. A vice captain out there helping them out. I'm just curious. I, I, I couldn't even tell you. I but Nick, you. Here, here's, here's what it boils down to. In the first game, they put Vinkatish Iyer in the lineup. Vinkatish Iyer did not get an over. You hear what I'm saying? Did not get one over. So apparently, they think Vinkatish Iyer, or not they, I should say, Kel Raul thinks that Vinkatish Iyer was supposed to be in that lineup simply the bat. His bat is better than Skies? Really? Really? You got to be better. You got to be better than that, K.O. Raul. And then today, if you look at the at, at the match today, you've got the core who got himself a wicket, seven economy rate. All right, the core always gets wickets, and he does help you out, out with the bat as well. To me, you might as well call it the core uh, uh, all rounder because he's both outscored Vinkatish Iyer with uh, the bat and with the ball as far as taking wickets. Nick is concerned, and as far as uh, um, uh, scoring runs is concerned. Not your all-rounder, but Shredot the core, okay? Your bowler. Vinkit Shower at least today, had a, a, a low economy rate of 565 overs, right? 28 uh, runs. But yet, who ended up getting more overs than both those guys? Boovy. I, I, I can't explain it, Nick. I, I, I just can't explain. Is it, like, mandated that boovy has got to get eight-plus overs? He's in the lineup, so he has to. Do you feel K.O. Raul feels like he's got to play Boovy because he's a veteran? What he can't be watching the same game we're watching, or maybe we are, and that tells you he's not a good captain. But any other captain's got to say, think he's the best with the new ball. Uh, I, dude, I make who knows, maybe I, I, I'm just maybe, saying, maybe they feel like him and Boomerah are a one two punch that very few teams can handle with the new ball. I don't but, know, but bro, at 70 80 miles an hour, he's not Boomerah, he's not getting the wickets, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, can you explain that to me? A guy that gets more wickets in the core than uh, Boovy and a, a guy whose economy rate is uh, lower than Boovy's and, and uh, Vinkatish Iyer and Boovy gets over, more overs than those guys. Is that good captaincy? Is that good captaincy? Uh, come on. Just it, it seems like, it, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, with, with my experience and our experience watching Indy the last few years, he's like another um, Sean Sharma. A guy who was spectacular not too long ago and just kind of like, I understand that idea. Like, let's just get him back in. You know, he's going to turn it around. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened too well. I want to talk about what I learned. This is what I learned. 
and you can call this pander. You can call whatever you want. I'm always honest. And if you don't believe it, then that is what it is. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We haven't watched too much South African cricket. Okay. And, and there's different reasons for that. Mainly, we're trying to handle a whole lot of cricket at one time. And we were, you know, we got our teams that we were really excited about. And now we're branching out. And India playing South Africa has given us an opportunity to check out some South African cricket. We saw them a little bit in the World Cup. And let me tell you this, and I've seen matches here and there, but not live streams. I like this South, this South African team. I like this team a lot. And let me tell you why. This South African team has impressed me with the way that they go about cricket. They have impressed me with the way that they all go out there and they put everything on the line, whether it's the fielding, whether it's trying to get those runouts, whether it's the bowling, whether it's the batting, whether you're batting at number six or you're opening, whatever it is, they have impressed me. Whether Malone goes down for a duck or two or three, whatever it was, and then he comes back here and gets 91. These guys have impressed me, and the chemistry seems to be so solid and so intact because they're playing for one another. Bavuma mentioned in his words, he's like, we don't have superstars. We have performances. Right? right, we have players. We don't focus on performance. We focus on the players and what they can do, what they can contribute. You don't have these type of performances where it's a different guy. It seems like or a different partnership each time. If you don't have chemistry, if you don't have this or that, and you don't, you don't listen to the outside, and you just play your match. This is what I've learned: is that South Africa. Now, this could be like the greatest tour that they have of 2022. Right. right, they can go out and play a lesser nation, whoever ranks those, and they can, you know, stink it up. But I don't think that's going to happen because this team has captains that center things down. You talked about Decock earlier. Not only was it a business call, in my opinion, but we also talked and we were complaining about how they played too much cricket. He's like, "Listen, I'm not going to kill myself. Look at what I'm doing, and I'm taking rest. Look at what I'm doing for my squad, who's man the match." I really, really like the South African side. And it's going to be a part of me that's going to be rooting for him because no one expected this, including myself. Didn't know too much about him. But I've, I love learning about new nations, new players I didn't know too much about before besides the big names. And I, I really, really like this squad. And the last thing I'm going to say is, unfortunately, going back to what I did not like, unfortunately, K.L. Raul joins a loathsome bunch as one of the few Indian captains that has lost his first two ODI, match, ODI matches. Small sample size, but he's on a list of like four people. It's frustrating. It's it's disappointing. It is what it is. How are you going to bounce back? How are you going to bounce back in that third match? That's what I learned, Gabe. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know what you think about our thoughts here. And until next time. That's six runs.